Hello everyone and welcome to Bridge is for Everyone. My name's Jad. This video is a departure from my usual how to play bridge videos. Not only am I a nationally accredited bridge teacher, but I'm also a mathematician by training and by passion. In this episode, I'll tell you about my mega favourite number. Many YouTube mathematicians are making a video this month about their mega fave number. That is, their favourite number, which is bigger than 1 million. You can see mine here. Of course, it's bridge related, as I will explain. Those of you familiar with my channel will recognise me at the bottom of the screen with the ironic halo. By tradition, my position is considered south. So what happens when a bridge hand is dealt to me? From my point of view, I'm dealt 13 cards from a regular pack of 52 cards. The number of different hands I can be dealt is easily found on Google. It's 52 choose 13. That is a little more than 635 billion which is way too small to be my mega fave number. So we need to look at all the hands that are dealt. After my cards are dealt, that leaves 39 cards to be shared among the other players. The next player receives 13 of these 39. The total possible hands for this player is 39 choose 13. Now let's do the same for the third player. There are only 26 cards left, and the third player receives 13 of them. The total number of possible hands for this player at this time is 26 choose 13. Now for the final player. There are only 13 cards left, and the third player receives 13 of them. This means that player has no choice at all. The total number of possible hands for the fourth player is 13 choose 13, which is just one. We can find the total number of bridge deals by multiplying all these choices together. So let's do that. We want 52 choose 13 times 39 choose 13 times 26 choose 13 times 13 choose 13. The formula for m choose n is simply m factorial divided by n factorial times m minus n factorial. Now let's apply this to our total number of deals. So 52 choose 13 equals 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial times 39 factorial. And 39 choose 13 equals 39 factorial divided by 13 factorial times 26 factorial. 26 choose 13 equals 26 factorial divided by 13 factorial times 13 factorial. And finally, to follow the pattern, 13 choose 13 equals 13 factorial divided by 13 factorial times 0 factorial. Right here, it's important to remember that 0 factorial is 1, so we can remove it. If you want to see why, just Google 0 factorial, and you'll find any number of YouTube videos that show you. Now let's multiply all these together. At this point, you'll notice that all the factorials in the numerator, that's the top line, cancel with the ones in the denominator, the bottom line, except for the first one, 52 factorial. So we're left with 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial times 13 factorial times 13 factorial times 13 factorial. Intuitively, this makes sense as we're breaking the deck of 52 cards into four hands of 13 cards each. So this number is the total number of possible deals in bridge. But what is it? It's about 5.4 times 10 to the 28th. 
but this is still smaller than my mega fave number. How can that be? So far, I've relied on my knowledge of mathematics, but now it's time to use some bridge knowledge. There's more variation to a bridge game than just the cards dealt. The first thing to check when you have your cards is, who is the dealer? This will determine the order of play and can make a huge difference. There are four players and each deals in turn. So even though the cards dealt to each player may be the same, the position of the dealer is important from my perspective as a player. So we need to multiply the number of deals by the four dealers to allow for this variation. But wait, this still isn't large enough for me. We've accounted for all the variations in dealing so what can possibly make this number even larger? The answer to that is this, the situation in which the hand is dealt. By this I mean the situation in what is called a rubber in bridge. Bridge tournaments and clubs no longer play bridge in rubbers, but there is still one hangover from rubber bridge that plays a vital part in all bridge deals. Vulnerability. Vulnerability changes the scoring for the deal and has a huge impact on the bidding and play of my hand. Each pair may be vulnerable or not vulnerable, and these two possibilities are independent for each pair. This gives us two states for each of two pair, which we must include in our possible games formula. This gives me a new number for my possible games of 858-315-804-247-820-685-427-799-040-000. And this is my mega fave number. When I sit down to a bridge table, I have all these possibilities in front of me and I hope I am ready for them all. But wait, how big is this number really? Let me put it in terms of something physical for those of you who are not bridge players. Surely that will make it easier. We all like the sun, so let's just take one metric tonne of the sun. We examine it, and find that the piece we took is nothing but hydrogen. We could count the hydrogen atoms to see how many there are, or we could use Avogadro's number to work it out. Counting takes a while, so let's do it the easy way. We calculate that it contains a little more than six followed by 29 zeros of atoms of hydrogen. Well, so you can really grasp my mega fave number. It's equivalent to about 1.42 tonnes of hydrogen atoms. Or as I like to think of it, 42% bigger than a tonne of the sun. Now there's an interesting number. 42. Where have I seen that before? Thanks for watching this special episode of Bridges for Everyone. Because, like Bridge, mathematics is for everyone.